Hello, everybody. It's Josh Rimini here with your Functional RX podcast. And today's episode, we are going to talk about the difference between fixing or I guess say managing cardiometabolic disease with prescriptions versus what we would do in a functional medicine perspective. So I've got my nutrition expert here at the store. Uh, you probably heard of her, senior uh, Connie. Uh, who's here to also help us talk about the difference between because what happens is we're gonna uh, We're gonna actually uh, di do a deep dive into you know why this is so much more important with prescriptions uh, And doing these other things rather than just prescriptions. So thanks for being on your first podcast Connie Hi guys. Thanks for listening. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Yeah, they're out there. They're not in here um <laughs> We like to have fun here too. It's it's uh, so you know we already did a podcast last week about what is cardiometabolic and what a personalized plan can look like and stuff like that. But really, you know, when you talk cardiometabolic, we're talking cardiovascular and metabolic disease. So it, they, the two work together. We've talked about that. So when someone has prediabetes, overweight, type 2 diabetes, uh, cardiovascular disease, which is cholesterol, blood pressure those kind of things. And they're 80% of people that still come through here too, is like they expect to take medications, right? So we are trying to dispel the myth that chronic dysfunction, in this case, chronic cardiometabolic disease, isn't and cannot be treated with prescriptions alone. So you might get a blood pressure, a blood pressure medication. You might be on multiple blood pressure medications. You're on things for your cholesterol and maybe your diabetes or blood sugar regulation. So, you know, the difference for that is, you know, what happens to the patient or the person that takes just the medications and they don't adopt lifestyle functional type stuff to their uh, modifications of their, of their life is they don't get better. The prescriptions are masking the symptom of the disease and in this case, cardiovascular and metabolic. Yes, they'll lower your blood sugar. They will lower your blood pressure. They will reduce the number of cholesterol particles that are in your bloodstream. Those are the things they're meant to do. But is that managing anything at all? Because what would happen if somebody stopped taking those medications? That things would go awry again. So we're not addressing the root cause. And we're not addressing lifestyle factors. So a big piece of what we're doing and why I wanted Connie in on this one is, you know, she's, she's our, our nutrition expert here. She's got specific training, college, post-grad training in nutrition. Um, and so we're going we're gonna to bring her in this because guess what? Food is medicine. And when we talk the difference between what a, a regular prescription plan for cardiovascular and metabolic disease is, and what we would do in a lifestyle plan or a functional medicine prescription that we call it here um, is the functional medicine RX and lifestyle plan for a patient is foundationally driven off of food, right? Plant-based Mediterranean diet is really what the cardiometabolic diet or food plan is here. Um, and that's not just saying, well, we're eating good fats and we're lowering inflammation by, you know, adding fish and omega-3s and things like that, it's, is food is medicine and literally food is science, right, Connie? Yeah. Um, I also want to, you know, drive a point here. When you're on a prescription medication and you don't do anything to change your diet, that prescription is only going to work so well. So if you, you know, eat the therapeutic foods, it's almost assisting that medication and maybe eventually, you know, decreasing that medication and maybe eliminating it altogether. Um, but you can't, you know, see a greater benefit without doing both of those things. Um, and I think people just want to take a pill because it's an easy out. Um, okay, great. That's, you know, you're doing one thing, but you're not doing, you're not doing enough to solve the whole problem here. Um, well, it's why we call it the pill for the ill, right? Cause mm -hmm. people want the ease. Um, but they don't also know, like, you know, I firmly believe everybody has the right to be vibrantly healthy. And I feel that most people do want to do something about that. And we're in the day and age now where people are embracing wellness, especially at this time in the beginning of the year. Um, people are, you know, embracing health and wellness. And, you know, I'm going to be more physically active. I'm going to lose some weight. I'm going to change my diet. 
Um, but there's more to that from a functional perspective. But, you know, we always say that, you know, a big part of what it is, is is what you're putting in your body. And a lot of that has to do with the food and nutrition we eat. Um, so, you know, using this metabolically uh, friendly, you know, food plan where we, we're introducing this plant-based Mediterranean diet is, you know, it, it's hard to explain to people, right? It's like, mm-hmm. You know, you say, well, yeah, I know lots of vegetables are good, but like there's a phytonutrient spectrum of food and why each color works for people and Mm -hmm. why we have to put the rainbow on our plate that's not Skittles, by Mm -hmm. the way. Um, Because we need to make sure that people, you know, when, when when you put it on your fork and you put it in your mouth and you think that that food is actually therapeutic for you, that that's an actual prescription, Mm -hmm. um... I think people think about it differently in that respect. When you think that food is literally good medicine coming in your body. And what I love is like geeking out a little bit on the science and telling them why this phytonutrient uh, component of this food Mm -hmm. is what is it doing. And, you know, you're taking a look at all the different colors and things of that nature. Yeah. And if you don't diversify your diet, you're not including some of those phytonutrients. And some of those nutrients may have a synergistic effect and may actually work better when you add them together. And you wouldn't know if you don't kind of go out of your comfort zone with uh, your uh, choosing your variety of fruits and vegetables. So. I had that exact conversation with some colleague friends of mine uh, in my, my entrepreneur network at lunch the other day. I was like, I always put avocado on my my burger. And they're like, why? And I'm like, because the avocado, there's a nutrient in there. I couldn't remember what it was um, that displaces the body's pro-inflammatory effects of the omega-6 that's in the meat. (laughs) And they're like, what? And I was like, yeah, you can actually make hamburgers more healthy by putting avocado on them. It's not just the taste. It's actually the synergistic effect with foods. Even something so simple as adding citrus to a salad. You can absorb iron a little bit better by just doing that. But if you, you know, if you don't try those different options or don't even think about how foods interact with each other, you're missing a whole, whole realm of information that your body is that your body is needing. Yep. So, it's a, um, and I, I always remember this one in my functional medicine training. For some reason, I have no idea why, but if you put mustard seeds on broccoli, uh, it actually helps you absorb the the nutrients that are in the broccoli better. So. These things happen in nature, and I think that, you know, there's a reason why uh, the vanilla bean is really easily um, grown on a cocoa uh, bean plant because they're synergistic together, um, Mm -hmm. which is is fascinating how science plays itself out that way. I do think, like, an interest plays a huge part into someone's, you know, choices. So I think it's when you're making that step to make those lifestyle changes, you kind of have to make yourself interested in why these things are working the way that they do, we don't expect you to kind of fold the know, the whole to know the whole mechanism behind um, a, the Mediterranean diet or the cardiometabolic diet per se. But um, it it kind of sparks your interest, and then you kind of learn a little bit more, and you then begin to care a little bit more about what you're putting in your body when you understand how it's working for you. And that's kind of we'll, we'll let's focus on that a little bit, you know, like because when everybody comes through a, a plan a functional wellness plan here you know God, they all have a food plan right and then in this case with cardiometabolic they're on a basically a plant-based mediterranean diet right it's mm-hmm. limiting sugar it's colorful diverse fruits and vegetables daily lean proteins managing portion size all that stuff so what we get to do we always say it's it's personalized to the patient so a big part of, of a functional program is the food plan. So that's why I'm excited to bring you here and in the fold is I hand them off to, to Connie and she takes that one facet of their plan and really expands upon it and personalizes it for them. So tell, walk a patient through a little bit about how you work with them on that. Because I think some people are like, well, here's what I need to eat. So now I know, you know, I feel like it, it gets overwhelming, right? It They're does. like, I don't cook or... I don't, I don't prepare foods or I don't have time. So that's First, kind of what yeah. you're doing, right? Yeah. Well, we look a little bit more about your daily habits and kind of what your average day looks like. If you're super busy, what choices are you making? Um, but also I like to go over the food plan and go through each section which with each of our patients and say, if there's a food in this food plan that you absolutely will never try or will never eat, go ahead and cross it off. I'm not going to make you eat something that's not appealing to you we want to make this fun and enjoyable for you as well as therapeutic so that's a huge 
um, point that I try to drive home with a lot of our patients is try to choose something in each of the colorful categories if you can. Um, find the foods that you like. Try something that you've never tried before. Um, if you don't like it, that's great. Try it again later. Try it in a different way. Prepare it we, differently. We, we, we do um, the two bites to be polite yeah, in our house. Exactly. <laughs> but, I mean, there there are things you may not know um, that you like. Or even if you prepare it slightly differently, it changes the taste of it. So um, a little bit of culinary art there can drastically uh, make a difference in someone's um, you know, dietary so I think, habits. Well, I, I think people are listening now. They're kind of freaking out. They're like, well, I eat out every day. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, I really want to get healthy. What if I join this program? Like, are, is there is there ways that you can dispel some of their myths about like you know? There's you, definitely we, ways. We don't to want do to go it. from yeah. zero to a hundred, right? There's definitely ways to do it, and I've um, kind of nitpicked into even um, doing a traveler's nutrition guide on how to eat healthy when you're on the road all the time and you're stopping at fast foods. It's really looking at the method of preparation when you're only given um, limited resources. Um, so even if you are busy on the go, there are slight shifts that you can make in your lifestyle choices that um, can kind of kick you in the right direction. And everybody slips up every now and then, and that's okay, but it's kind of more how do you stay on track even during um, a busy season such as the holidays. Um, that was a huge question from a lot of uh, patients recently. Um, how do I stay on track when it's the indulging season? So, well, and uh, the stressful season, <laughs> And the stressful right? season. So when you're stressed, you tend to gravitate towards foods that make you feel good, but um, you know, what if you kept in mind that if you eat good foods, you feel good for even longer. So, and I think the, the other component of that is which what I just thought of is, you know, people think eating healthy is not tasty. It's not until you've you. had a healthy food that tastes good. It's, I can see how that myth is hard to, to, to combat. So, um, I, so I, I like to dispel yeah. that myth when we start. And part of that is it's literally changing biochemistry and taste buds mm -hmm. when, you know, literally most people that join a, a food plan or a weight loss program, or in this case, a cardiometabolic plan that's, that's designed around that lowering inflammation and, and lowering the body fat, but is there's a sugar detox mm -hmm. that comes from that. <coughs> Excuse me. And what happens there is people are so used to high fat, high sugar mm -hmm. diets that their, their taste buds literally uh, crave that. But you can actually push through that. That's the thing is once you get through it, it's really easy. It's not very difficult. It's just the body is so used to eating those things and feeling those things as a reward mechanism that we really, it's literally like a sugar and fat detox, but yeah. it's not that bad, right? You, you keep the, the, the body stable with a lot of protein and it's not as no. The cravings eventually go down. It is hard work. Um, it's not it's not easy trying to get off a sugar detox, but with the right support and the right guidance, I think that um, it, it can be overcome pretty quickly, um, and your diet can be transitioned. So, Yeah, so food is super important. I always say it, food is medicine. Food is information. It's genetic information. We're trying to figure out these things. We're fixing biochemistry. So this functional cardiometabolic plan that we have, you know, incorporates diet, exercise, and physical activity into the, the fold. Uh, we, we talked about that plant-based Mediterranean diet, which is super important in ways that we can go around using it. Stress, environmental factors, uh, relationships, all these things play a role in the body's ability to affect this cardio and metabolic space. Um, and then we personalize everybody's plan with the right nutrient solutions that are going to help them. We use lots of different targeted uh, nutraceuticals or nutrients in supplement form that are really going to push the body forward and help treat synergistically their cholesterol, their inflammation, uh, their blood sugar balance, um, and even hypertension and high blood, high blood pressure. We can all actually fix some of these things and help de-prescribe some of those medicines uh, if that's their goal. Um, and I feel like most people don't want to be on chronic medication and they would be interested to figuring out way, whether they can reduce or eliminate altogether. And I think some of our plans can do that. So that's really the difference between filling a prescription only and getting pretty much nowhere 
or um, you know managing basically the symptom or actually getting to the root cause and fixing uh, some of these dysfunctions to ultimately lower or or eliminate their prescriptions and, and making them feel you know vibrantly healthy again. And I think um, part of our role here too is to dive deeper into what your doctor tells you to do. Um, really, they say, okay, I'm going to fill this prescription for you. I want you to eat right and exercise, and then I'll see you back in three months. Well. Our job is um, not only one to fill your prescriptions here, but also to dive deeper into what you, eating right and exercising looks like for you, because you don't get that with your doctor. We you don't, actually want you don't you, get. We want to yeah. do what the doctor asks and prescribe you to do. Exactly. Right? Like we so want to follow up on that second part of that prescription, yeah. because the whole prescription is looking at your whole entire lifestyle. If you think about it like that. And it's not just the medication, the prescription Which is why should be we your call diet. it the yeah. functional, the functional lifestyle plan and prescription, right? Yeah. So the plan has to go in place. So that's what we're here for. We're not here to be against the doctor. They told you to do it. They prescribed it, really. I we're wish they would get out a prescription pad and give it to us yeah. and say, he would eat right, exercise, get your life in order, and, and do all the lifestyle modifications that you need to because yeah. that's in the literature. So that's kind of what we do. Yeah. So that's it in a nutshell. Thanks, Connie. I really appreciate you being around. Of course. Uh, we love that you're here because it's such a super important factor in what we're doing here to creating this wellness community. Thanks, guys. Please share this with everybody if you liked it. Uh, we're trying to get as many people out there on this wellness community, that train that we're trying to build this year in 2020. I'm Josh Remini, and this is your Functional Rx Podcast.